actually rule out a severe thunderstorm warning here or there popping up, you know, this afternoon sure. with some of our cells down into uh, South Florida. But yes, this morning we just really have our shield of rain and notice our winds here too ahead of our front, nice warm air. And then behind it, it's actually much cooler and drier. You'll feel a difference as you head out the door. And that's one way that you can actually determine a front is you look at the winds. You see the shift in winds? Voila. Pretty cool, right? There's other ways that you can find the front too. It's not just looking at the rain, by the way. And behind our front is usually a lot drier. So you look for dew point temperatures ahead and behind it. Usually you see a bit of a drop. We can show that to you actually on our water vapor. This is all dry air coming in, all right? So the humidity is out of there. Very dry air while you have that moisture ahead of it in the mid to upper levels. That was what the water vapor shows you. Let's show you the Tampa Bay area. And the good news with this is that lightning you don't really see as much as we had last hour and the hour before. So that means that we just have that nice shield, gentle rain. Uh, you can walk the dog with no problem. But here it's a little more explosive coming into places like Naples and going across Alligator Alley there, Fort Myers, uh, perhaps Sat hearing that lightning too and perhaps seeing it as well. This whole system is going to be making its way through Florida. Possibility of thunderstorms as we head, especially into the afternoon hours. And some of these boomers, listen, these are the ones... I'm saying that you can't rule out a severe thunderstorm uh, popping up. What exactly is a severe thunderstorm? Winds of 58 miles per hour higher or hail an inch or more in diameter. Those are some of the things that can kick off that warning or why the weather service will, you know, make that warning happen. So even if these don't have severe limits to them, Blinding rain, the kind where like your windshield wipers will not keep up with it. And listen, a wind gust of 40, 50 miles an hour, that could, you know, definitely take some tree limbs down and just still be very impressive. So here's a look at the rain that's still to come. Two to three inches for us here around Lake Okeechobee, or one to two, I should say, two to three. My brain was faster than my mouth here uh, up towards the Carolinas. And actually farther into the northeast, we will see some of that heavier rain too. So let's take it deeper in to uh, Chucktown here off the South Carolina coast. You know what town that is? Charleston. There you go. Charleston, South Carolina. Flood watches are posted for today in the Northeast. It's not just New York City. It's actually a good chunk of, you know, southeastern New York. We've got eastern Pennsylvania in that. Northeastern Pennsylvania. New York City actually not in it, but just uh, just outside of there. Northern Jersey flood watches. And they extend all the way down into Virginia, um, into parts of West Virginia as well, where we've already been seeing the very heavy rainfall. Jim just talked about this and covered this. So where we see that steady plume of moisture going, get ready for some pretty heavy rain. And the concern that streams and creeks could quickly rise. Watch out for storm drains. Um, you know, today we're going to be watching for that chance of rain to be up over an inch plus per hour. And if you get into that kind of rainfall rate, that's kind of what we've been seeing here across Virginia overnight. That's when you run the risk of some flash flooding. It's what we saw in Charlotte overnight, too. So look at Martinsville. More than two inches of rain just since midnight, picking up here um, about an inch and a half around Hot Springs, getting into the lighter rain now. So the heaviest of rainfall, the corridor of heaviest of rain, has shifted just a little bit to the East. But you notice how slowly it's shifting to the east because we're in that generally uh, south to north movement of the moisture. It's not moving east that fast. So you get stuck in it for a while. Like what's happening right now around Harrisburg, you're about to get into the rainfall and it's going to stick around um, for you heavy at times over the next couple of hours. Eastern Pennsylvania, just wait this afternoon. This is coming your way. And we're going to be watching for, as we see this plume of moisture from the south, once we tap into that Atlantic moisture, because we're already getting somewhat of an easterly wind component. We get that southeasterly wind component at the surface. So now we've got moisture coming at us from two angles here. That's really going to exacerbate the risk for the heavy rainfall. And we see that ongoing into tonight, up towards the Poconos, uh, into uh, upstate New York, Albany, the Capital District. We get the very heavy rainfall. And then New England, it's overnight tonight and early tomorrow morning that you see that plume of moisture moisture set up pointed right at us. But yet the upper level low is not through yet. So we keep a few showers around throughout the day on Friday and even into early Saturday. Some showers are going to stick around, not like what we're going to see today but still some showers. And then the rainfall adding up to about an inch or even two or three locally heavy rain there. The other big factor that you don't necessarily see when you look at that forecast radar is that this all comes with some really strong winds. And I'm not talking about thunderstorm winds, Steph. It's just going to be windy. Yeah, what we call synoptic.